like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning, like the circles that you find in the windmills of your Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. We're going to kick things off with our debonair ideal segment. I'm going to turn it over to Will to introduce this week's debonair ideal. Yep, yep. Um, quick note, though, before we kind of start that, um, I know we had Phil Zengi, um advertise for this show. He had to reschedule at the last moment, so we will have him rescheduled at a uh, later time. But um, I noticed was, this is kind of a topic that Phil wanted us to kind of talk about in the debonair ideal. So I think we'll give it a shot anyway. Um, and that was um, luggage. Now, you may say, you know, why luggage? Well, I just kind of got went through a bunch of travels here. And I kind of began to relate to having um, not just having travel humidors, but actually having places to store your cigars and your travel humidors and luggage. Very important. Very important. It, it, it's very, very important. Um, I find, you know, the, you know, when I'm traveling, I normally will avoid at all costs checking in a bag. So I'll, I'll always do a carry on, and um, I will always try um, to get into a zone one or a zone two with the airline. To, so at least I know I can store my stuff in the overhead compartment. Um, so. I find it's very important to have a, a good wheel, a good wheel case, and you want to have something that's durable. Um, you want to have something that has good wheels on it. You want to have something that, you know, is going to have good a good fabric or a good leather. Um, something that you're going to, you know, especially if you are traveling a lot or even if you're not, it's durable. Um, the other thing I'll say with luggage sorry, Will, is, before you go on uh, along those lines. Um, I want to, can I, I make a like yeah, a product? Absolutely. I'm going to make absolutely. a product pitch. Um, oh, I'm glad you. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Because I, I've looked into luggage a lot, and I do my fair share of traveling, and I have found, and it's somewhat like not debonair. Like if I was thinking about what luggage would be debonair, it would not be this, right? I would think of like nice luggage that looks nice. Oftentimes, it's not. It's hard to find something that looks nice and is functional like that. Um, so that this does not fall in this category, but in terms of function and functionality, I really like the tactical companies. So there's like a big thing about tactical gear, especially in computer security, right? Uh, there are two companies that make tactical gear that also make luggage. Um, one is Maxpedition. They're very focused on bags and luggage. And the other one is 511 Tactical. So I don't know if anyone is in law enforcement and military, probably familiar with those. Anyone that's into like tactical kind of gear uh, is probably familiar with those two brands. And all of my luggage now, my carry-ons, my backpacks, my wheelies that I'll take with me, the things that I check, they're all one of those two brands. So my everyday carry bag is uh, a Maxpedition. It's actually a Falcon 3. And what's nice about that one in terms of carrying cigars is that it has all of the loopholes in Velcro and buckles on it so that you can strap things to it. So I'll take a cigar case, and if I'm carrying that on the plane with me, I can actually strap it right to my backpack and take it right on the plane with me. So if I have checked bags, sometimes I'll take a hard you know, case, like the ones from Perdomo are awesome, hard plastic case, and I'll, I'll strap that right to my, my backpack and just carry that right on the plane with me. Um, I have another Maxpedition wheelie, which is, like you said, well, it's it's very very durable, um, very very functional. I also have five eleven. They're these gigantic bags, and they actually don't weigh that much, but they're really really big. Um, and I'll put my cigars in the middle of those if I am gonna check it. Uh, it's not good to put your cigars in your check bags. Uh, make sure there's humidification in there, um, but those will protect your uh, your cigars, and they're big enough where you can take a pretty big cigar case uh, and stuff it in there as well. So that's. I, that's my recommendation for luggage. Again, it's you know it looks very tactical. You know, people will you know ask me like you know in the military or law enforcement because uh, it looks like that kind of style uh, bag. But I find and I've tried tons and tons of different bags over the years, and I, my Maxpedition Falcon Three, which I use to carry cigars all the time, it's got lots of pockets, got lots of straps. 
I think it's great. It's very functional for that. I actually get lots of compliments on that bag about like how cool it looks because you can attach so many different things to it, um, and it fits nicely under the seat and all that kind of stuff. And again, that's a Max Expedition Falcon Three. So you kind of hit in the hot button for me. Well, I'm really into my my gear bags. No, I- yeah, so so tell me about this Velcro. I mean, is this Velcro thing? Is it something where you have to worry about the thing falling off? I mean, how well does it work? So there's Velcro, but there's also Chris. What are those loops? I need help. What are the loops? Carabiners. They ca- use carabiners, but there's a, a, a M- M- o- M-O-L-E, a mole connector is a standard kind of connector for bags. So it's basically a, a, like a nylon strap that's sewn in and has loops through it. And it's like a standard thing that you can attach uh, M-O-L-E style things to it. So sometimes I use carabiners. Sometimes I use Velcro straps. It also has Velcro so I can put patches on there, which identifies it as my luggage, gives it some character. It also has, you know, standard uh, plastic, um, uh, you know, locking straps, one that kind of goes over the top kind of thing so that I can put a cigar case and, and strap it right to the bag. That's that's what I mean. That's I, that's an eye opener for me. They're all, <laughs> oh yeah, dude. They're yeah, they're yeah. awesome. And and again, I, it was actually my friend Carlos. Uh, it has a military, you know, kind of law enforcement type background. Um, they turned me on to some of this tactical gear, and I was like, wow, this solves a lot of problems when you're traveling. I'm like, this is the best gear ever uh, for traveling. It's amazing the amount of stuff you can put in and still keep it organized and all that stuff. And we kind of got very into that as well. You know, in computer security, when I'm going to a conference, for example, I've got lots of electronic gadgets to take with me. And you don't want to check, put them in your check bags. They're kind of like cigars, right? They're kind of fragile. And you want to keep those, those things with you. Often the times they're important to the conference I'm going, I may be teaching a class or giving a presentation. And that electronic device is very critical to me being able to give that presentation or course. So I like to keep them with me. I like to put it in check bags. Um, so that, that's another reason why. I, for me, luggage, I've turned completely to all of the tactical t- style gear. That's, that's, no, that's, that's, uh, that's excellent. I mean, that's a real... Um, yeah. yeah, that's a... Now, a leather problem. bag looks much nicer. And I've got it, some it does. awesome, awesome-looking leather bags. The problem with leather is it's heavy. Uh, and it's, it's just going to add a lot of weight. And quite frankly, I'll carry a 30-count cigar humidor with me when I go on the plane, and that's pretty heavy too. So to kind of lighten the load, I've switched to some different, some different gear. Yep. Now, sometimes you may be, like, if you have the problem like I had in Vegas where you run out of room in your travel humidor. So imagine you take, I take 20 cigars with me in a travel humidor, and somehow I'm coming back with more, which... which always happens. Which always, go figure that... Um, again, I think some things you want to do is, you know, don't make them, you know, obviously you want to make sure you have some Bovita packs with you, um, or get some, but the, yeah, they can be hard good, to find when you're traveling. If there's I had not trouble a reputable, finding them in yeah. Vegas. I had trouble finding them in Vegas. In which, Ve- so, and it's funny you say that. Well, I have a trouble finding them in Vegas. I will often bring, I will go to the cigar stores here locally in Rhode Island, Mr. J's Havana smoke shop or the Havana club. I will buy extra Bovita packs in the plastic wrapping, and I'll take them with me to Vegas. That's because you can't find them. Gonna, yeah, but they have the little ones too that you can buy for like seventy-five cents. Yeah, um, and they're in the, and they're in the bins, and they're. I mean, um, I took a bunch of them actually uh, on a trip once. Um, like I said, this time I didn't expect to come back with, with the cigars I did. But yeah, you're right. You they just don't assume you can get those things. Sometimes uh, they're not as, as easy to find, but. If you are going to have to put things, you know, I would advise having, I would advise not putting your cigar, if you have like a wheel bag or whatever, don't put them in those outside pockets. No. Put them inside the luggage. Um, you know, use, I, you can even use some of your clothes kind of as, as a, a cushion. As a cushion with that. You know what I did but when I went to Corona? When I went to yeah. Corona, I requested it of them. I said, I, I need you to put these in boxes for me. I said, because I'm, I'm buying a lot of cigars. I didn't expect to buy this many cigars. And my plan was that I'm going to have to put some of these in my check bag because there's no way. Because I was traveling with my whole family. So I'm like, I'm going to have a lot of stuff to carry. And um, they did. They found boxes for me, and they put water pillows inside the boxes. And, and that worked fine. In fact, I'm smoking through what I bought a couple of weeks ago in, in Orlando. Um, and it, it's all been pretty much fine. Uh, actually, it has been fine in terms of environmental conditions um, because it had a water pillow in there. So you don't, sometimes you don't necessarily need the Bavita. Even a water pillow is fine. I mean, really... When you're traveling, you yeah, you're more than likely going to be in a drier, colder environment, which is also going to drop the humidity. If it it's goes up in a plane, that's a very dry environment, even in the cabin. So, 
um, but definitely you know, a water yeah. pill is better than nothing, certainly. Yeah, and I was kind of, I kind of was, I brain farted, I guess, in the Davidoff store, which um, I went to the Davidoff store in Vegas, which at the over at the Venetian, and and the level of customer service is second to none. Um, I probably could have solved this problem by just asking. Yes, you, know? you probably could. Mean, high end, I, I like probably, yeah, Corona's a high end shop like that, yeah. dude. I mean, yeah, I, I was spending a good amount of money. And even if you don't spend a lot of money, those shops are going to help you, dude. They're, I mean, you'd be like, dude, I'm traveling. I, I don't want these cigars to get wrecked, and they'll, they'll go out of their way. And every cigar shop has extra boxes, empty boxes laying around, and that's yeah, perfectly they, they acceptable. Do. You could they, even tape, you know, have them tape an empty cigar box and tape them up if you wanted to get them home. So, but that's an important thing to, I think, keep in mind when you're traveling, Will. Yeah, no, it, it is very important on that, you know. So definitely use, well, you, you know, Use those stores, you know. A- a- ask you. Know, you want to be prepared because sometimes you may be going. You may hit a city, and you may hit. You may just find that that gem of a cigar store and go to town like Paul did or what I did in Vegas. So, you know, you want to kind of be ready for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will be. In, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll be in Las Vegas in August. I'll be. Yeah. Uh, look. Oh, it's hot. It's hot, but you know, it's it's, hot. a lot of cigars are being. You know, I'm at a conference. There's a lot of socializing going on. To be a lot of cigar smoking. Stogie uh, Sander and I. It was we basically couldn't find a quiet place to smoke. It yeah. was very crowded, and we tried to go outside, and it was just so. It was like a sauna, and we said, "We don't need to smoke tonight." You know, it was actually we just decided not to smoke. I mean, so it wasn't comfortable. You want to? Yeah, but, I remember being outside at like a pool party, and we're all having cigars, and it, they just yeah. don't taste the same, dude. They they do not you know and that dry dry air they don't they don't taste the same. The, the funny story about that is um, two years ago at, at IPCPR uh, Omar from Fratello he actually gave out a his cigar at the uh, FDA seminar, and I smoked mine in the seminar. And one of the guys I was with said, "I'm going to smoke at poolside." And he was poolside, and he said, "This cigar is terrible." He's like, "Blah blah blah," and I'm like, "Yeah." I said, "Dude, where did you smoke that?" He goes, "At the pool." So. He got another one from Omar at the show. He came back. Uh, the net net of it is he ended up bringing that that cigar into his shop. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, and it was for that exact reason. Yep. That's a good point. Yep. Cool. Okay. Okay. Are we reading another so, sponsor now? Is that what we're doing? We'll read M Bombay. Okay. So this segment is brought to you by M Bombay Cigars. M Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. From selecting the best of the best quality of different tobaccos used for the aging process of cigars are taken into consideration. M Bombay Cigars are roasted, are roasted, I'm thinking coffee. <laughs> They're rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band for our cigars portray the most detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. The newly released M Bombay Casera and the M Bombay Mora. Give them a try. M Bombay cigars with a cigar is a way of life. Now, will you're smoking one of those right now? I am smoking a unreleased or a size soon to be released of the Mora, uh, which is a Salomon. Um, it, that's this is a really good cigar. It's um it's got a Dominican Corojo uh, wrapper, a Ecuadorian binder, and a combination of Dominican, Peruvian, and Ecuadorian filler. There's something really unique about Peruvian filler. It works in some blends. I was just going to say that, Will. It and is. It, it it's, works in some mm-hmm. blends, and which in this blend, I think it works really well. And in other blends, it, I don't know quite it works as well. But it's my feeling it's got almost this herbally, a little bit of an evergreen quality to it at times. Um, it's just very different. But you know it's Peruvian tobacco when you're smoking it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very distinct. It's very distinct, you, you, you know, and you could tell by the amount of it. And I think I think that this is balanced off with some Dominican and Ecuadorian are real, really good. So this Salomona, uh, it's burning real good. It's smoking excellent right now. Nice, nice. I'm excited about our stogies of the week this week. Well, yeah, yeah. I think we got some interesting ones. We do. Um, I smoked the Aging Room Havo. Is that how you say that? Havo. Haval. Haval. I think it's, I think it's Haval. Haval. It's, Haval. That's the Connecticut. It is the Connecticut from Aging Room. I was super excited to to smoke the um, the Aging Room Connecticut uh, 
Raphael Nodell, right? I got that right. He's Raphael aging. Nodell. Okay. He's been on the show for quite a few times and uh, is a good friend of the show. Makes awesome, awesome cigars. And he's it's just to such Charlotte a... next week. He's coming to Charlotte next week. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's such, yep, a, yep. such a nice guy. And I, I, like, I, I love his cigars. So I was really excited to try, uh, looking forward to trying the Connecticut. And this was the, uh, the torpedo sized. And I, got, I actually got this from Corona Cigar on my last trip. Um, the wrapper had a lot of character visually. So it was a very uh, almost kind of toothy looking wrapper and had some discolorations towards the foot, which gave it a lot of character. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, Will, but I don't take points off a cigar if it has a sunspot or some no. discolorations. I don't take points off for that at all, ever. I it, think it, it's character because I, I, it, it makes me really feel like I'm smoking a naturally grown product, right? Exactly. I, I kind of like it when the wrappers have a little character. It gives me faith that, hey, this is a natural product. It's a plant, and it's going to have these variations in color um, and, and different characteristics to, to each one of the wrappers. So I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's really cool. Texture is going to be the key. Texture is the key. Yes. Color is going to differ because of the conditions. It just, Absolutely. It's just that. Yeah. And we've seen lots of various color differences. I mean, if you look at a box, sometimes there's color differences in the wrapper, and I, I think that's okay. I mean, as long as as long as I can most of the time tell the difference between a Maduro and a natural, I'm good. And yeah, mostly that's for my own. I've never noticed a flavor difference, right? If like one in the box is a different color than another, I have about you. I've never noticed a flavor difference between the two. No, and there and there isn't. Now, typically on Connecticut wrappers, you'll sometimes get those green spots. That's what I got. That oh. green. You can kind of see it towards the foot. It was a. It looks black in the picture. That's just because I took it with my iPhone. Um, but it was did have a greenish hue to it. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just kind of some of the uh, the chlorophyll. I think that's kind of concentrated there more than anything. Yeah. Uh, it's just that the Connecticut shade is going to show it, and there's no doesn't mean you have mold or anything like that. Um, right. And I think again, it adds to a little character to the cigar. Yeah. And now this cigar to flavor profile to me seemed a little young, but I think it had huge potential. Like I, I could, there was some definite toasty, caramel flavors in there that um, I like to find in the Connecticut shade, but. Um, it just seemed like it was a little young. It needed some more time to age. And these, this is a newer release, obviously, from Aging Room. So I haven't given this one a rating yet, Will, because I think it has huge potential, and I want to seek more out because I think it has the makings of being a really great Connecticut Shade Cigar. And Connecticut Shade Cigars get a bad rap, man. And I, I'm kind of like, you know me, I'm on a mission to find awesome Connecticut cigars. And I think this could definitely be one of them, but I'm kind of holding off on a rating until I can get some that I think are more uh, properly aged. Yeah, it's actually been out for a couple of years, and you're has you're, it. You're, I've never yeah. seen it before. This is the first time I've seen it because I was no, in a different it, shop. It's, it's been, yeah, it's been out. It was one of the earlier ones that was released, and you were spot on. Um, that cigar needs to sit. Mm. Um, so maybe it came from the factory. Um, it just depends, you know, when the batches were made. But I've found that cigar gets really good over time. Oh, okay. So you have experienced that. So I, I have experienced oh. that. Yes, I have experienced that. It's not an inconsistency. I find it's just. It, you know, if if the if the things were rolled and shipped, you know, I just find they're they're. You sometimes hate to say you have to get a cigar and put it in your humidor, but you know maybe the retailer just got it in or whatever. So yeah. that's the only drawback I've seen in, with the Haval in particular. Cool. Yeah. Back to you, Will. All right. Um. So back on episode one twenty four, which I can't believe was eight episodes ago, mm. we had uh, our friend Omar De Frias from Fratello on, who I was just talking about. Um, and he happened, that was actually the time when they, he announced his new Lancero, um, the Fratello, it's called the Fratello H-Town Lancero, um, and it's a shop exclusive that went to um, Stogie's World Class Cigars in Houston. Um, now, Omar talked, uh, Omar really got a little bit Stogie geeky that night, which I liked, um, because he talked about how he had to kind of modify that blend to get it to work with the Lancero. And there were two key things he said he had to change. He had to take the Lajero out because of burn issues, which I could see that making some, some especially with the Lancero. And then he took out uh, the Nicaraguan tobaccos because it, um, the Nicaraguan tobaccos in the filler because of the size. It's a 38 size Lancero. And, you know, a lot of times you just can't pack a lot of tobacco into that small ring gauge. Um, and you've seen people at Drew Estate, for example, when they did the L40, they had to make a 40 ring gauge just because they can't – it limits the tobacco. So this is basically the same blend but 
what he has at the filler, it's all Peruvian or mostly pretty much all Peruvian is what he said. Um, that being said, it, it's, it is a different, it's a different cigar. Um, it's different in size and different in blend. And we just talked about this with Luis, um, earlier on. Um, it's, I'll say this, of, of, of all Mars, of the six sizes, it's the most dialed back. It's a milder Lancero. Um, it's in that mild to medium to medium range. Um, it's, it's got, I just mentioned that Peruvian taste. It has more of an evergreen flavor to it. Um, it just, compared to the other sizes in that line, um, and I've had all the other sizes, it just, I felt it didn't stand up. It's a, it's a good cigar. It's a good, what I call change of pace cigar. If you want a Lancero, if you want something milder, um, it didn't have me doing handstands like when I've smoked the Fratello Corona or the Boxer. Um, but I think, you know, if you're a Lancero geek and you're not looking for something heavy and you're looking for a change of pace cigar, it's a fine cigar to have. There's nothing wrong with it. But I kind of went with a fiver on that um, at the highest, really. But, you know, like I said, if you're a Lancero geek, check it out. It's a different spin on the Fratello, to say the least. Paul, you smoked this one as well, right? Yeah, I agree with your assessment. I think uh, it's a very smooth cigar. Um, I don't think there's a lot of flavor change-ups as it, with some of the other sizes. But if yeah. you enjoy Lanceros, it's certainly dialed back, something you can have. Uh, I wouldn't light up first thing in the morning, but I would smoke it earlier in the day with coffee. Um, and it's a very enjoyable cigar. I agree with your fiber rating. Something different kind of changed things up. Yeah, it's it, you know we just talk about Peruvian tobacco. And it's, I'm not saying it's a bad taste. It's just when I've had some of those other sizes in the line, I know what that blend is yes, capable. Yes, I agree. Yeah. It's more dynamic in some of those other sizes. It, it, exactly, exactly. But it's good because he's got the Fratello core line in the middle. The boxer is kind of the the mm-hmm. stronger one, and then the, the Fratello Lancero is kind of more dialed back on that. Yeah. Um, I just finished my Falto 20th anniversary. Oh. It's got to be my favorite Falto, dude. It is just, it is really good from start to finish. It is just awesome. It's awesome. And again, he said it was one of his stronger blends, and I, I kind of hope he puts out a couple more stronger blends. While I appreciate the, you know, the medium body, full flavored cigars he puts out, I really liked this one with it was amped up a little bit in strength. He did a really nice job with this blend. What's the size of that again? What's, what's, it's what's a, a seven by fifty. It's a double Corona. Okay. And not a lot of double Coronas coming out on the market lately, as we've talked. And they're not a lot of good ones either. No, yeah. no. And this one, this one hit the mark. I just finished yeah. that one, and I, I I lit up something else to finish up the show. Um, it's kind of another little kind of shameless plug uh, for next door uh, at the Havana Cigar Club. I, I lit up a Tatuaje Nueva Reserva, and what they do Uh-oh. next door, they just started this thing every day. They have a cigar brand of the day. And that cigar brand of the day is an extra 10% off. So if you're a member, you get your member discount plus an extra 10% off when you buy five, at least five. So they kind of give you like a box discount if you're buying five of that cigar brand of the day. And any, any cigar in the brand, which I think is a genius idea. It, because every day it gives me something new to look forward to. Uh, well, I mean, uh, fortunately, I work right next door, right? Because I, I work here in the studio during the day uh, for my day job uh, in the office in the back. So I pop in next door quite frequently, you know, every day uh, to get that fault of coffee. And I, I check out and I see which one is the, uh, uh, you know, cigar of the day. And more often than not, especially when it's Tatuaje, I'm like, eh, maybe I need to stock up on some Tatuaje. And they had no way of reservists in there. Um, so I've been smoking a lot of these Noe Reservas. Dude, they're just so awesome. I just I can't get enough of them. I've got two, probably a box and a half in my humidor at home. But you know, having a couple of extra here in the studio, it's a great like short cigar. It fills the time. So flavorful. It just never disappoints. Ultra consistent, and just an awesome flavor profile. Uh, you give the cigar to someone to someone else. Um, Really, regardless of what they're smoking, I've found, whether they're a regular cigar smoker or a casual cigar smoker, dude, they're wowed by this cigar. Um, you know, uh, some people that I work with in my day job, I give them, they love this cigar. They love this cigar. And um, yeah, I just think it's great. You know, that's a cigar I always say um, when I was a listener of the show. I remember when you guys first smoked it. Mm-hmm. And you were talking about that and the, reg- uh, the, the Regis that Regis, came out. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I remember it's you and Stogie Sandra Mark, you know, waxing poetic over that, that Noel. And I went and bought it like right after that. And, and I, I totally get it. Um, yeah. It, it, well, it, it was is a white a whale. Cigar. For a long time, it was a white whale. Yeah. And I think that contributed to like how excited we got about the cigar because 
I had smoked a Nueva Reserva maybe once before they started coming out regularly last year or the year before. And it was a white whale, dude. And I'm like, oh. Well, they're semi-regular, too. They're not, he's not doing Now they're the, semi-regular. Doing... And, but right. I tell you what. Yeah. They're, like, equally as good. He, had, he, he nailed the blend again in his re-release, which sometimes doesn't always work out for a cigar manufacturer. In this case, dude, like, he, he just he nailed it. He nailed yeah, it. it's a perfect storm with that with that size. I found um, mm-hmm. with the Noella size, it's just and it just is a consistent. So you know, folks are uh, you know looking for that stick too. You know, check out call the Havana, call Havana. You know, these guys are great supporters of ours, um, and they'll give you great service over there. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I smoked a, a Sosa cigar well, which I don't have available in my local shops. Did you get them in Florida? I did. I got them in Florida. Um, yep. it's a, I mean, we'll order cigars online too. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. We have to source well, cigars have- wherever we're going to source cigars from. We do our best to support our local shops, and I mean that's why we have such a great relationship with our local shops because we're like, hey, we do the show, so like whatever you're getting in new, like sign me up. I'm I'm buying like whatever you have that I haven't smoked yet. Like I'm I'm buying it, and it's nice because you can buy one and not have to pay shipping. So we're huge supporters of our local brick and mortar, not just for that reason, but because we like to support our brick and mortars. Um, is they're, they're heart of the cigar industry, really. And yep. um, so when I travel, I try and seek out things that I don't normally get. And Sosa Cigars was one of them. This is a Sosa, um, the Wavel Maduro Robusto. That's one of their older ones, yeah. Yeah, well, so for me, it's new, right? Because right. I haven't, I haven't it's, we don't have Sosa Cigars here right. uh, in Rhode Island that I know of. And um, this is the Maduro wrapper. Great Maduro flavors. I mean, it really embodies everything that is Maduro. That nice toasty chocolate with a little bit of spice. Uh, if you like those Maduro flavors, you're going to like this one. What I said was it's no-nonsense, straight-up Maduro. Uh, and you have to really appreciate that. I would call it a fiver. Did you get that at Corona or did you get that at the so- Sosa shop? Oh, no, you know what? This was in my locker. You, I either bought this somewhere or you sent it to me. I had five of them. Well, you went to Sosa. You've gone to Sosa before. I, I went think. to Sosa before. I didn't know if I bought five of them when I went there. Okay, that's the one. Yeah, downtown, I don't think I've sent that. I haven't smoked that in ages. That's why. Downtown Disney. I may have bought it. So this may have been in my locker yeah. for a year. Yeah. I mean, I know Orlando's one. Of, I mean, they're hard to find Sosas outside of Florida. I yes. know that for a fact. So I probably bought yeah. this in Florida, which is yeah. a funny story. I had to smoke out of the locker. Because I had kind of neglected <clears throat> refilling the humidity stuff in my humidor here in the studio. So <laughs> my cigars were like, cracking and kind of dry. Um, so I said, well, I better smoke out of my locker because I know that's humidified properly. So I had to sit for 24 hours before I could smoke out of the one here again. <laughs> so well, I, uh, I've since added a couple of the uh, Zycar little gel jars. So and they're smoking fine now. But it was good because it kind of forced me to go to my locker and smoke something different. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, I hear you on that, you know. And this is the uh, worst time of the year um, to to have, you know, it's, it's just a bad time of the year. Now, next week I think we have on Cigar Oasis. Nice. So, uh, yes, we can a humidity. I'm looking forward to that. So we will that. really uh, – yeah, we'll really – those guys uh, – Chime really can geek it up on the humidity uh, – humidification. So we'll really yeah, be getting so into that I. next That's good. Yeah. Back to you, Will. All right, um, this was a cigar I picked up in Dallas, um, and I had, I had known of this release. I hadn't smoked it. It came out last year, and it's a cigar by Perdomo called the Double Aids 12-Year Vintage, uh, and they actually make three blends. They make a Sun Grown, a Maduro, and a Connecticut. Have you had any of these? Uh, I'm looking at it now. No, I haven't had the Double Aged okay. Perdomo. I have not had this one yet. Okay, so the story with this is that what what they're doing is they have some tobaccos that have been in bales for like 10 years. And, and what they did is they take those tobaccos, and then what they're doing is they're barrel aging them. They take them from the bales, they barrel age all the tobacco, including the wrapper, another two years, and they, they call it a double-aged effect. That's where they get the name. Um, and I spoke to Connecticut. Now, Perdomo did a pretty limited run of these. Uh, they went – when I started – they went to 250 stores and they made 2,500 boxes. So it's it's a limited production. It's not a one and done from what I understand. Um, and, you know, I've, I've liked Perdomo's – I like Perdomo's Connecticut. I think they've done some good Connecticut. I've, you know, the Champagne is probably the one everyone's the most familiar with. Yeah, that's been around um, forever. Yeah. That being said um, – 
I this was a nice surprise of a cigar. Um, and that's why I was asking if you had smoked it. It wasn't a cigar that's going to kick you in strength. So it's still going to be in that mild to medium range. So it's not going to have a nicotine level. It's not going to try to redefine that the strength part. But the body on that cigar, it really had some nice weight on the palate. Where it was not only did it have great flavor, but the weight of those flavors, you, you really kind of felt it. Um, it had it had a nice amount of complexity. It had some notes of orange, cedar. It had some classic cream notes. Um, it even had this little bit of a nougat sweetness I was getting from time to time. Um, the the burn the burn was a little bit problematic. Um, I found that the ash was flaky and the wrapper blistered a bit. I'm gonna chalk that up from travel back from Dallas. Is all I'm gonna mm. do. So it was a little more work I had to do. I don't think it was Paul syndrome on it. Um, what I kind of looked at this is this is a great next step from the champagne. Yeah. So if you you know if this was one if you like the champagne maybe you go to this cigar. I smoked it in a five by fifty six and I thought it was a real good size in that robusto. Um, I bet as a box split I would nice. definitely seek these out again and smoke it. Um, I gotta try that one. I like the uh, the tw- is it the twentieth anniversary sun grown. The sun grown, yeah. Yeah, I like the sun grown. And it's actually a listener Joe in the chat that it was commenting on the sun grown. I actually bought a box of those sun growns on closeout. They were at the uh, the sidewalk sale at Mr. J's on a smoke shop, and I bought a box of them, dude. They're really good. They really have good. some strengths. Those those twenty year anniversaries. They're not they're not weak cigars by any. They're they actually look- aging to be kind of a morning cigar. So they kind of came they, down. They came strength. down with some age, and um, okay. I really I I really really like. I'm glad I have a box of those. Okay. Yeah, I remember when I had one of them. I said this for Bordomo. I found this mm. pretty strong. Uh, I smoked the Illusione ECCJ twentieth. This has been uh, this has been getting some yes. buzz, dude. Right? Um, my yeah. first uh, attempt, I had Paul syndrome with this cigar, and I picked up a couple more because I could recognize the wonderful flavor profile that this cigar puts out. Some spice up front, nice smooth flavors. There's some sweetness that comes and goes that I wish would stay persistent, but it kind of comes and goes, which is kind of nice too because it kind of keeps your attention. This is a solid offering from Illusione, and I, I would box split these all day long. Probably with age, they're working up to, to box worthy. Uh, fantastic flavor profile. I, the only thing that might that was kind of in the back of my head when I was smoking it was that the new Singular from 2014 is just like borderline Oasis level cigar. <laughs> yeah, like, I still would. If yeah, you yeah, like yeah. that, you're gonna like the ECCJ, but I would still put the 2014 Singular uh, kind of tops on my list. And I hate to compare it like that, but I just – there are some flavor similarities there as well. Yeah, in my opinion, 2014 was Dion's year. He had the best year he had, yeah. I think, in a long time. I, I, I probably would have that ECCJ between a, a box split and a box worthy cigar. Um, I, I was never the biggest Epernay fan. Um, it depends on the size. The, the sizes of Epernay smoke depend- all different. But when I smoked that ECCJ, yeah. which I felt was kind of an Epernay – Ish. Plus, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Epernay little, ish, but yeah. it's it's different. I kind of have gone back to Epernay, and now I get it. Mm. I get what Dion was doing with that. That and that ECCJ twenty is is a is a real. If you're a if you're an Epernay fan, you want to get this cigar. Yep, it it, it was a really. I picked up um I picked up a couple of those um at Smoke In when I was in Palm Beach. So mm-hmm. I haven't smoked the ones, but I had smoked the pre-release as well as Stogie Santa from IPCPR. We were very very high on that cigar. Um, we were wondering when it was going to come out, and uh, I've never had the ECCJ 15, which was the first one. So I have nothing to compare that against, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Back to you, Will. So I smoked another, and, and I, if you notice, I have some milder cigars because I I had a respiratory thing, so I went milder a lot more this week. Um, and this one was sent from uh, our friends at um, Two Guys Smoke Shop, um, and it's uh, called the Garofalo. <laughs> and it's actually a cigar. Gee, I wonder for, where that comes from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it comes from Dave Garofalo, obviously. Um, so the, here's the thing I've learned about. So Dave Garofalo, um, he what he's what he's done and it's kind of now he's starting to really spread the word out on this is he's getting into the distribution angle of, of cigars so he is distributing obviously if you've heard of the ad us talking about the atabays and the, and the offerings from selected tobacco mm-hmm. it's his group that's doing the u.s distribution well he's got other brands that he's contracting out with factories and releasing 
And this is one that he contracted out with Perdomo um, called the Garofalo Robusto, uh, Garofalo, which is in a Robusto. Um, it's a Connecticut shade cigar with Nicaraguan uh, tobacco. It's in a five by 50. Um, and it was, a, I tell you, it was, a, it was, a, it was not a cigar that I'd say is going to light me on fire in terms of being anything extraordinary. Um, it did have a, it was a mild, mild cigar. Um, so I was just talking about that Perdomo earlier on. This is going to be one of the mildest cigars I've had. Um, it's a great starter cigar for people at 650. Um, it's going to have a little bit of a grassy profile, but it's got a little bit of this butterscotch sweetness, but here's the thing. These flavors, there's flavors there, but they're going to weigh a lot less on the palate. So they're not going to give you that coating effect. So they're, they're more mild. It's much more of a mild bodied cigar. Um, at six fifty, it's a cigar definitely worth checking out. I don't know if I, you know, um, I don't know how easy they are to acquire. I know obviously two guys sells it, but I know it's not exclusive to two guys that they are distributing it. I gave it a fiver. It's definitely worth checking out. Nice. I think I, I sent you one of them. So, oh, do I have one have, kicking around in there? You may have, have one. Yeah, yeah, I think you do. If not, let me know. Okay. I smoked a Partagas eighteen forty five limited reserve nineteen ninety six Decatus Robusto. This comes in a beautiful glass tube with the little dongle, for lack of a better term. Uh, it, it hangs off the end of the glass tube. Uh, again, this is in the Robusto size. Um, some interesting things about this cigar. The Limited Reserve Decatas gets its name, uh, is giving its name from well-aged Cameroon wrapper, which looks really dark for a Cameroon wrapper, um, that is 10 years old, 1995, Partagas started setting aside approximately 1 in 1,000 Cameroon wrapper leaves for aging. Um, the remainder of the blend consists of Dominican and Mexican long fillers and has a Mexican binder. So, yeah, these cigars are supposed to be awesome. I just don't get it. I mean, it's, it's, it's got a very distinct flavor profile. Sure, they're rare and aged and the packaging's outstanding. I mean, for me, I, I just don't get the flavor profile. I mean, some say it's leather, with a mixture of some kind of herbal aroma, it just which doesn't mix well for me. I read it as a try one. And these are kind of pricey. Um, you know, that's based on some of the other sizes I've tried in this blend as well. Uh, it, maybe it's because people hype it up as being like super special. I just I don't get it. Will what do you what do you think of this? I mean, it has all the makings of being a great cigar, but it just doesn't come together for me when I smoke these. It's a I I probably would have it as a try one to fiver. It seems like it's a very dated blend. Mm. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it's, I guess there's that's so much it. more that's happened with blends right now Yeah, that I think it's just had its time and there's better stuff out there at a better price. Yep, that um, I would definitely agree with. It, it, just seems, that's what it, just, it seems like it just passed it by with that. But it's not a pricey – it's pricey, rather, so I wouldn't go yeah. – like, probably. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go higher. But I, a, I had that Partagas 160 in the glass tube. That I got at JR's, totally different ball game, dude. That that's cigar special. was spectacular. I mean, that's not the 150, but it's no. a, still a very good cigar. Still awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm curious to see what General is gonna do with Party this year because just kind of doing my math, it's 170th anniversary. Mm. Uh, so something may happen. I don't know. I'm just kind of speculating because I'm looking at the 1845 and it's 2015. So mm -hmm. I guess it's something just to keep an eye on and see what they're gonna do. Yep. Back to you, Will. Um, this one actually is a cigar I, I smoked as well. Um, we had a uh, back on. Uh, we had him on the show probably back in September, and he wasn't very well known. But uh, this is a cigar by a uh, fellow by the name of Kyle Gellis out of Warped Cigars. Um, who this guy just kind of set the world on fire right now in terms of probably him and Caldwell, the two hottest boutiques I'd say out there right now. Mm. Um, I smoked uh, one of the cigars in his La Colmena line, which I had, I have been reviewing on Cigar Coop. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called uh, the Amado uh, number um, uh, 36. Um, and the reason is it's a 36 ring gauge cigar. And, um, the interesting thing about this cigar is I've had this cigar in a 44, which is a Lonsdale, and I've had it in a uh, Bellicoso as well. Um, but this is the thinnest ring gauge of this cigar. Um, La Colmaine is an interesting blend. I'll say it's not a blend for everybody. Um, and the 36 is actually 
each of those three sizes are going to smoke very different. Um, the 36 is going to have more notes of uh, cedar, pepper, and herbs. Um, I found the other sizes were much more creamier and much more sweeter. It had a little bit of a fruit sweetness. This one in the smaller ring gauge didn't have as much of that. Um, and I've had discussions with people who've smoked all three, and, and sometimes there's just this natural tendency, well, smaller is better. Um, I didn't find it with this cigar. I found that the 36 was, I found actually in the bigger ring gauges, this cigar smoked much, much better. Interesting. Um, yeah, it, it was, it, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. You know, again, you're looking at wrapper um, on there. Uh, it's a it's a cigar out of uh, El Titan de Bronze. It uses an Ecuadorian Del Florida wrapper, which I want to say is kind of like a darker Connecticut. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's shade grown or not. That's a question I need to find out. Um it's it's a good cigar. It's it's a, I'd put it as a box split right now, but I'd say this: it wouldn't be my first recommendation in the uh, La Comena line. But you may want to have one again if you're looking for a little bit of a change of pace and you really like the La Comena blend. You could check this out. It's kind of again in that Fratello category. Uh, Will, do you want to take a break now? Yeah. Okay. I think it's a good point. Take a break. Come back and uh, finish up our Stogies of the Week segment. So with yep. that, we're gonna take a break. Come right back. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. Yep. <laughs> 